you're going to live next to me. We're going to be neighbors. I remember Holy saying shit. that. You said that. I did because I just I needed to say something that would just give him some kind of hope. But then when, and, and he kind of laughed. He has this hyena like laugh, this little high pitched laugh, and, he, and he's like, "Okay, sir." <laughs> and we hung up the phone, and I just looked at my wife, and I was like, "What did I just do?" But at that point, I knew I was I was in, and I was in pretty deep. We were putting together this plan for Nizam, and Mike called me, and he said, "Scott, he's got to go now." And I was like, "What, dude? We don't even have a plan yet. Like, he's gonna burn his safe house. It's broad daylight." And he said, "Mike said, I've got a feeling, man. I'm watching the news. I'm watching how things are falling. The Taliban are actually gonna be security partners yeah. with the neo forces. Like, if we don't get him in on the inside of that Taliban ring, they're gonna check his credentials, and he's dead." He's got to go now. So that's what we did. And we told him, brother, you're going to have to go. You're going to have to go now. And he said, okay, sir. And I don't know, man. I didn't know what was going to happen. And I think that's probably the hardest thing about this whole thing is that so many of us, we heard, we heard those words a lot and they didn't get out. You know, they died in the ISIS blast or they were executed or they're still there. You know, it's one thing when you, you have memories of brothers or things that happened and it was, it was bad. You know, like there was, but when they say, yes, sir, got it, moving. And that's the last time you hear from them, man. You never get over that.